Hey, what's up, guys? Dion here. Uh, I wanted to make this video uh, because uh, a few people, you know, they've been wanting about my setup and you know how I run stems and how I run tracks and all that good stuff. So uh, I figured, uh, you know, I'd go ahead and make this video. Um, um, as many of you know, uh, every year, you know, uh, um, I have, I play for you know a New Year's concert at my at my home church, and every year we do about 20 songs. So um, you know, I figured, you know, this is the best time to show you guys, you know, because throughout the year I'm usually busy. So, um, yeah, this is my setup. And first thing I want to point out is you really don't need a lot of expensive equipment to run tracks. Um, you know, a lot of people think they have to spend, you know, at least, you know, 2000 5000 on, you know, on certain gear just to be able to run tracks. But really all you need is, you know, just a computer. Uh, well, technically you really don't need a computer, but... Um, uh, you know, uh, that's a starting point. You know, uh, a lot of know a lot of people. You know, they kind of started with iPods and all that kind of stuff. Um, pretty much, when, once you learn the basics, you know, you can uh, you can get by with pretty much any audio device—a tablet, a computer, or iPod, or, or even a phone. Now, I wouldn't recommend a phone uh, because you know sometimes phones get texts, you know, messages, and all that kind of stuff. So, usually, you know, I recommend a computer, an iPod, or something, or a tablet. But anyway, back to my setup. Thing I wanted to point out. Um, uh, usually, um, I carry around my keyboards, but um, lately I've been getting into the habit of you know not carrying carrying around my keyboards just because it's so you know uh, heavy. <laughs> so um, uh, what I did is I I bought me a little Casio, um, and I just use it. You know, um, uh, in addition to you know Studio One and Ableton, I mean you pretty much can get you know studio quality sounds. You know, just from running a simple MIDI chord from a basic keyboard, you know, um, and into a, a digital audio workstation or DAW. So, mainly when when I'm, I'm running tracks, I use two things. I use my Akai MPD-226. That's this baby right here. Um, I think it set me back about 250 but I love it, man. Like, uh, I'm going to explain why later. Um, and I use... Uh, a computer of some sort. Now this is my laptop um, right here. It's a, a HP Pavilion G series. Um, nothing special. Um, uh, so I use it sometimes but um, I also use my one second Windows Surface uh, to um, run tracks. And now I know some of you are wondering why wow, like is that how can you use a tablet you know to run tracks. Well um, there's a certain trick that I'm going to show you guys to pretty much be able to run, you know, um, uh, tracks on any, you know, computer-like device. Hey, what's up, guys? Dion here. Um, excuse my audio. It's a little poor. I'm, I'm, I'm having to use my little earbuds to record this. Um, I'm going to try to clean up to the best of my ability, but, yeah. Um, anyway, so, um, now we're inside, um my Ableton um, session. Yeah, so um, anyway, we're, we're inside my uh, Ableton set for uh, the concert that I'm going to be playing uh, for New Year's. Um, and as you can see, I have about 10 um, tracks set up. Um, one is just a MIDI track. One is a tempo track um, in which I bring the tempo in from Studio One um, for, you know, um, just because certain songs have tempo changes and a lot of weird tempo and time switches and all that kind of stuff. And then after I spend a lot of time making, you know, those tempo changes and um, sick time signature changes, I don't want to come back over to Ableton and have to redo it. So I just bring in the click from Studio One. This is the guide track, you know, verse two, three, four, bridge two, three, four, and so on and so forth. All right, now here is... Um, here is where the magic happens. Uh, these four tracks. Bass, drums, flute, and tracks. All right. Um, as I was telling you guys earlier, um, uh, my church has three musicians. Um, with, you know, well, actually a little more, but um, the others are kind of auxiliary instruments. So, you know, we have our main instruments are bass, uh, piano, and drums. So um, I have a bass track, I have a drum track, and I have a loop. Now, the bass and the drum tracks are for um, what I like to call emergency purposes in which you know um, I don't have my um, my full band so if the bass player you know can't make it or the drummer can't make it then I'll turn on their track these tracks and I'll use that to play along with these tracks 
Now the loop is simply like a you know it's a um, you know, as the name implies it's a continual loop of something usually shakers and a clap you know or, or some some type of auxiliary instruments or percussion or you know something like that. Now this is this is where the magic happens you know that keeps it prevents your computer from overloading. Um, what I've done here is I've I've created um, a track and I've called it tracks. And what I do with this um, with this track is I mix down maybe four and five instruments um, into a single audio file um, because what happens is the more files that you give Ableton to play, the heavier the burden becomes on the software and on your computer to play all those tracks. Now um, it's easy for the computer to play just one file, um, but it's harder for it to play ten files or five files than it is to play one file. What you can do is you can you want, you want to find a balance between flexibility and easing the workload on your computer. Now for me, um, for the most part, I'm going to use the entire track except the bass and the drums because we already have a bass player and a drummer. So um, those are the only, um, those are the main tracks that I sectioned out. Now I also sectioned out tempo. Um, and guide, um, and I did that because sometimes I, you know, I need to route the click, you know, and the guide, you know, to certain places. But actually, the way that I mix down my files is um, I mix it down in a way where the tempo and the guide are already panned to the left. Um, but um, yeah, anyway, uh, I just put them in here, you know, just in case I, I want to add a sand. Let's say, you know, um, I have, okay, I have a drummer sand over here in the right. This is a saying, you know, where I usually send to the drummer. So if I want to send him, you know, uh, more tempo or or less guide, then I can, you know, I can alter the sands, you know, and he'll be okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, and over here I have auxiliary instruments. Now I could have, I could have mixed these down into the, um, into the track file, but I didn't want to, um, simply because my computer has plenty of, you know, uh, strength left after I mix those you know four or five tracks down into a single file and sometimes I like to turn up the um, the electric guitar you know especially if it's doing like a lead part so um, that's why I, I kept it separate now piano and auxiliary um, these may be you know um, you know a track where um, you know I, I want a little you know uh, pad piano playing up under me doing something different than what I'm doing uh, but other than that um, I may not use these tracks, um, but yeah. So that that's pretty much that's pretty much my setup. Let's go back to my um, my external setup. Let me show you guys how I use my uh, Akai MPD two two six to run stems. Okay, so first, um, what I like about Akai is you have different modes. Like I actually have a, a Studio One mode that I use for different things, um, and I can actually color code those different modes or whatever. So this is my Ableton mode. So th well, this is my Ableton Live Performance Mode. So uh, first thing you're going to notice is the red button on the top right. That is my panic button. Okay, and whenever I use that whenever I run tracks, just in case we get off, I'll hit the panic button and it'll just loop the, um, you know, the, the click track or just the, the song loop, which is usually just shakers or, you know, auxiliary instruments. Um, yeah, so in, in addition... Um, with Akai, you get 16 pads, but you have four banks. So there's four banks of 16 pads. So that's a total of 64 pads that I have access to. In addition, you get four sliders boop, 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 and four knobs. All right, but with, with the sliders and the knobs, you get three banks. Um, so, you know, that's a total of 12 sliders and 12 knobs. So, I mean, you have plenty of, you know, flexibility for controls. But I only use, you know, about 60% of, of, you know, the stuff. Um, so, back to my pads. Um, okay, this year, um, because we're, we're doing um, about 20 songs, um, the way I've set my tracks up is I've set one track to a single um, uh, uh, layer in, in session view. I know a lot of people they like to, they like to section out their songs as a fail safe or you know error, but when I have a lot of songs, it, it's kind of difficult. So I pretty much just rely on the cues, you know, and the and the click track to pretty much help us stay, you know, uh, within time. So um, the way I have my pad set up is um, 
the first pad always triggers the uh, the first song, second pad triggers the second song, third song, fourth song, fifth song, and so on, all the way up until you know either I'm out of pads or you know we done with the performance. Is this green button? Um, now, this is just um, something that I use uh, to help me keep track of my location. So, um, as I was saying, you have you can have uh, you have up to 64 pads, and the way that you access those pads uh, is through the different banks. You have Bank A, Bank B, Bank C, and Bank D. That's for the pad bank. And then for the control bank, the sliders and the knobs, you have Bank A, Bank B, and Bank C. So um, um, the way I set it up is sometimes when you're in a live performance, it's kind of difficult to, you know, try to lean over and see, you know, what bank you're in. So the way I set it up is when I'm in bank A, the first button lights up green. And then when I switch to bank B, the second button lights up green. And the same thing for bank C and bank D. So that just pretty much helps me keep track of what bank I'm in. Now, um... My my panic button is always on the first bank or the first page. Um, see, I like to think of it as pages. This is the first page, second page, third page, fourth page, and so on and so forth. Now, if you notice, my panic button is only on the first page. The um, the other bank, well, the other uh, on the other pages, this is just a, a normal pad. So um, if I'm on page two, you know, and something goes wrong, I will quickly cycle back to page one and hit the panic button. As I was saying, Ableton doesn't allow you to map multiple controls, uh, well, multiple uh, devices to the same control. Uh oh, I accidentally triggered uh, one of my tracks. But yeah, as I was saying, um, Ableton doesn't let you route multiple um, devices to uh, a control. So, for example, if I want this to be the the volume. Um, slider for the main volume. I can't also route this to the main volume slider. I have to uh, use one or the other. Well, I'm sure there is a way. I, I was reading on forums and I, I was hearing some people say it is possible, but you have to download like third-party software and all that kind of stuff. So I'd just rather not do that. I think it would just be easier for me to just cycle through um, because initially what I wanted to do, I wanted to have a panic button on every page. So even if I'm in the um, in, on the second page, I wanted to still have a panic button um, and it would still trigger the uh, the solo for the loop track. But, you know, it's, just, it's not much of a problem just for me to, you know, hur hurry back to the first page. And most of the time, you know, um, you really shouldn't, shouldn't encounter errors that much where, you know, uh, that would become a problem. Um, I'm just going to show you guys an example. Um, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to turn on the metronome so you guys can see. Um... Okay, so pretty much once I've set everything up, I, I don't um, have to touch my computer again, you know, unless something goes horribly wrong. Um, but yeah, so uh, when I get ready for the first song, I just make sure all the volume controls are up. Um, but if, okay, if I'm in a performance, I always turn down the, um, the middle two controls because this is the bass and that, that's the drums. Um, and I always have my bass player and my, and my drummer. So I turn these two channels down. Um, ensuring only the main volume is up and the loop is up, and then I just I just start the track. So I'm, let me turn my um on my speaker volume up so you guys can hear it. But I'm just gonna let you guys see you know see uh, me control it. Oh, I forgot. Um, okay, stop. Hit the stop button. Okay, uh, I forgot. Uh, I haven't made. The, I haven't finished the, the very, very first track. It's kind of like an intro track, so I got to jump to the second song. So I'm gonna skip the first button. Okay, here we go. Okay, I forgot. I had I had one of the tracks solo from uh, the earlier video. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, let's try that again. So we're gonna stop. We're gonna stop everything. Um, yeah. Okay, and I'm gonna try that again. Now, sometimes you might see me reach up here if my, um, if my speakers are just too loud, period, and it's not really the track's fault. Okay, here we go. Uh, so, I'm going to skip the first song, going to the second song. I just 
just hit the panic button. Uh, but if you can see, my computer is not even using the 30%. Okay, I'm finna unmute the panic button. Bass, bass. Main volume. Main volume. Uh oh. Uh oh. I accidentally touched the wrong pad uh, with my with my uh, pinky. Okay, that's another thing you got to watch out. You got to be careful. Uh, I better use my right hand to control the uh, hit the controls. All right, let's start that. Let's start that up again. Three, two, one, go. Okay, now let's, let's pretend that song is over. Uh, so when the song ends, the track is going to stop. So, okay, once the first song, or well, the second song is played, then I'll move to the third song. Oh, I forgot. I, you, got, you have to make sure that once you hit the panic button, you have to make sure that you unpanic it. Because when you start the next track, you know, Ableton is going to remember that. Uh, okay, so let's try that again. Three, two, one, go. Okay, and I'm I'm sure you got you guys get the gist of it now. So whatever tool you use, it really doesn't matter. Like I've seen guys with less fancier pads, who you know still get you know uh, you know uh, bang for the buck. Um, and actually, I had a um, a basic pad until uh, recently when I just decided to get this because I needed more control. You know, um, and it gives you a, a you know greater flexibility. You know, I kind of wanted enough flexibility where I wouldn't have to touch the computer at all. You know, uh, in any circumstance. And I, I found that, you know, uh, the Akai MPD-226 pretty much gives, gives me that flexibility. Um, so, yeah, I hope you guys can, you know, uh, take something away from this. And, you know, um, it doesn't matter what equipment you have, just that you know how to use it. Um, because, honestly, I, pre I probably could have, um, you know, got, you know, 70% of the same functionality with my old pad. However, the main, the main um, point that sold me on this pad was the sliders. You know, um, you know I, can turn, I, I can add tracks, you know, and I can control the volume. Um, you know, with, with most of the basic pads, you want to get one slider for the main volume. But, you know, sometimes I might want to turn, you know, turn the bass up, you know, in the middle of a song. You know, they say, you know, the drummer, you know, uh, loses, you know, uh, both sticks, you know, that rarely ever happens, but, you know, if you go to church, I'm sure you guys have seen, you know, when a church, when everyone starts shouting, let's say the drummer, you know, starts shouting, okay, uh, you know, I can turn the drum track up, or let's say somebody needs to go to the bathroom or something like that, you know, let's say the bass player needs to go to the bathroom, I can turn the bass up, you know, um, until he gets back, you know, and it gives, it just gives you a lot of flexibility, and, you know, that's, that's something that I was really looking for, so, um, yeah, whatever you use, um, you know, just use it to the best of your ability, um, and as I was saying earlier, you don't need, uh, you know, the best equipment. You just need to know how to use your, the tools that you have at your disposal. So, um, yeah, thanks for watching. If you guys have any, you know, have any questions or, you know, uh, anything else, you know, uh, drop a comment and I'll try to get back to you.